In this video, we're going to quickly run through some of the terms associated with disaster recovery, like RPO, which is recovery point objective, RTO, recovery time objective, MTD, maximum tolerable downtime, and WRT, work recovery time. Not a lot of people really understand or are familiar with the work recovery time portion, but that's a very important concept to get, and we'll run through that through this video. If you know the maximum tolerable downtime, the MTD, for a critical asset, it doesn't mean you now have a proper disaster recovery plan in place. Just knowing the MTD of your most critical asset is, I don't know, five hours, just knowing that number isn't enough. There are still factions within the MTD that must be considered, such as the recovery time objective and the work recovery time. They're actually pretty simple concepts. It's a very high level overview and pretty much all you need to know for the exam. So once you see this concept in action, it might sink in and you won't have to remember it and you'll just, uh, just actually get to know it. Recovery time objective and work recovery time both have to be fulfilled within the maximum tolerable downtime. As you can see from the graphic, RTO and WRT fall in the same time frame as the MTD. Okay, so both the time objective and the work recovery time have to be completed within the maximum tolerable downtime. Recovery point objective to the far left, it does not because... Actually, let's just go through the entire graphic and then it'll make a lot more sense. Let's go through all the, all the steps. In step one, you have normal business operations, okay? Everything is working fine. The accounting and sales file servers are being accessed properly, and there's proper redundancy in place for network security devices like firewalls and routers. And by redundancy, I mean in case one device fails and traffic is prevented from entering or leaving the organization, another device that is in standby will handle all the traffic that the first one failed uh, can't handle after the failure. Step one is not only where business operations are normal, but also the data throughout the organization is being properly backed up. If someone from the development group just saved, the, uh, just saved a .js JavaScript file to the development server, then that data is being backed up at the same time. If someone saves a Word document to their local computer and not on the network, then their documents are being backed up to a backup server automatically. This is, this is done to prepare for availability, to ensure availability. Oh, and notice when the system recovery is initiated, when, when we initiate system recovery, right at the time of the disaster. You don't want to wait hours or even minutes. Recovery should start as soon as the disaster occurs. I mean, if your RTO is five hours or if your return recovery time objective is 24 hours, maybe you don't have to start right away. But most uh, companies, if, if, if there's a disaster, they want to get it fixed right away, at least in this operation scenarios that I've been in. So the recovery time objective is very short, most likely like an hour. So you want to get to work as soon as possible, just as soon as the disaster occurs. Step three is when systems are recovered and we are just about to enter the work recovery time. So in a way, step two is the initiation of disaster recovery and step three is the immediate recovery from the disaster. And I say immediate because there's a lot more we have to do right after all systems are recovered, which is what we go over in step four. So it's just a quick, the apps, so if a firewall is down, the firewall is brought back online. So just because that happens doesn't mean everything is fine with the company. We still have to test everything out and make sure we have our backups. And that's what comes into play in step four. Before we go on to step four though, notice we're still within the maximum tolerable downtime. And, but, and we're still not done. We now have to deal with what I think is the most important phase, as I've said, is step four. And if you work in operations, then you might understand what I'm saying. Step four deals with testing all systems and access and making sure the user has the final say in if things are truly back to normal. Backups are restored. The same data that was being properly backed up during step one is the same data we have back since we couldn't access it, access it during the disaster. So if you saved a document one hour before the disaster, then that document you saved is now available to you to make sure everything looks fine. This happens during the work recovery time. You test out if everything's fine, if what you backed up and all the data you, may, you thought you lost is actually back because of proper backup schedules is actually there. So within this work recovery time, testing occurs. Users confirm everything's back to normal and we move on to step five. And step five is simply the organization doing business just as it was right before the disaster occurred. Everything's now back to normal at step five. 
I hope this video cleared things up for you when it comes to understanding the differences between uh, RPO, RT, RTO, MTD, and WRT. You can download a PDF of this graphic with the link below, and thanks for watching.